Hey, welcome to another lesson of Breakthrough Growth. Today, we're going to talk about your hardest decision to win, focus, and that means segmentation. Why do we need to segment to accelerate the time to scale? Basically, it's because of the different psychographic characteristics of the early market and the mainstream market of the early adopters and the early majority. So if we want to target the early majority and we want to accelerate the time to scale, we need to focus on vertical messages and positioning because it's what they care about, it's what the majority cares about. And it's part of their decision making when buying a technology-based product. So we need to, need to focus on a niche and it's where the biggest opportunity to be a market leader resides. Because remember, early majority is skeptical. They want low risk decisions. They want low risk products and the lowest decision or the lowest risk product um, we can have is having the market leader product. And that's going to be very compelling for the early majority. So uh, if we focus on a segment, we will be in a better position to develop a market leadership position. We will talk about positioning in the next lesson, but today is about segmenting. But that's one of the reasons. Then what happened if we don't segment? If we don't segment, word of mouth can develop at their fullest. We don't have distribution channels leverage. We don't have application or use case leverage. We don't have partner, allies, or sponsor leverage. We don't have pricing leverage. And probably the worst of all is Everyone is a competitor. This way to, or the quickest way to stand out is focusing on a segment and suddenly we get out of a crowded market, we stand out because we are focusing on a segment that nobody else is focusing. So uh, it's the best way to get out of, of huge, a huge competition, right? So now we're going to laser focus your strategy with our recipe, the segment focus recipe. I'm going to show you this recipe. So imagine that you are in your early market, you have your early adopters, and you've been focusing on building more features and you have different kind of customers you are serving. Now you want to scale. So it's time to understand what groups of early adopters, what are the common characteristics of those early adopters uh, so that we can pick a segment to serve um, and, and accelerate our time to scale. And how do we do it? So we're going to define the segment. We are going to group these user characteristics. If you don't have users because you still don't have a product, it's about researching the market and grouping the common characteristics of these segments. Starting with buyer, we need to know who owns the budget so we're going to define who is the owner of the budget. That's one of the stakeholders. Who is the final user? They might be different from the buyers or not, depending on, uh, for example, in enterprise, the, the buyer is different from the final user in most of the cases. But who will use our product? We need to know who is the final user. And then we need to know who is the initiator of the, or the influencer, who initiates the conversation with us, who is looking for solutions, and who is influencing the decision, other kind of stakeholders or um, uh, people in the decision-making unit. The, the decision-making unit is the, the unit that is making the decision to buy our product. Then the size of the business and the industry, we want to focus this segment. Then the geographic boundaries, the specific regions we will focus, and the price range of our solution or competitor solution. Then the next one is the problem statement. And here is where we start with psychographic analysis. So the main problem statement, we will define it, understanding the situation, the motivation, and the expected results or outcomes of our target customer, of our segment. Here is a ConvertKit example. I put this for you to understand. So ConvertKit is an email marketing solution focusing on a very specific target. Right now they are targeting in creators. They were targeting some years ago in bloggers. So the situation is when creating a side project, this segment, these creators 
uh, uh, they are they are building new side projects. So that's the situation they are facing. We're looking for this kind of solution. We're looking for ConvertKit. Next step is understanding the motivation. I want to create a newsletter. So when starting a side project, I want to create a newsletter. Create a newsletter is the motivation so I can grow my audience quicker. And that's really important. The expected outcome or the result is something measurable. It can increase or decrease. So we need to define this main problem statement and we will dig deeper into the psychographic analysis and we will understand in the segment definition what's the actual state and what's the desired state for that segment. So in the actual state, we have the current solution, what's the current solution workaround or compensating behavior of the stakeholders. Then the pains, what is making the stakeholders struggle with the current solution, what is making it them trigger the switching decision? And then the consequences, what are the consequences uh, of, the, of using the actual solution or behavior? And those consequences are measurable negative impact of the actual state, of the actual solution, something that is measurable and that's important. That fits with the uh, results or outcomes in the main problem statement, but it's a little bit more detailed. And now the desired state, we're going to define the desired state. So in the middle is going to be our solution, right? So desired state is a slightly definition of our solution. How is our solution different from the current one, but it's very rough definition. And then most importantly, the pain relievers, how our solution is solving the pains of the stakeholders, the first pains that we've been defining in the actual state. And then most, even most importantly, because it's the result they can expect, um, are the switching outcomes, are the measurable positive impact of switching to our solution. Again, something that can increase or decrease. So once we have the segments define it, we can have one, two, three, up to probably five different segments define it. We want to escort the segments to decide where to focus our strategy to accelerate the time to scale. And this is the scoring system. We have a scoring from one to five and you have to score and, and, and uh, calculate the average of all these different criteria to pick the best segment. And the best segment is the, the, the top average of in, in the scoring, right? So the first of all is understanding is if the buyer, if the buyer has urgency to solve the problem, if the problem to solve is not urgent, I mean, probably we can get out of business real quick, spending time and money with something that uh, is not urgent to solve. So how urgent it is, score it from one to five, then we need to score if the buyer is accessible through existing channels, if we cannot reach them, we cannot sell to them, right? Then how much competition is expected in this specific segment? The lower, the better. Then understanding if our solution or, and remember about the low risk recipe fits with the problem of this specific segment. What happens is that different segments need slightly different in solutions, slightly different solutions, not only features, but low risk recipes. Remember the last lesson, the last lesson, sorry. So um, it might happen that our solution re fits really good with one segment, but doesn't fit that much with another segment. And that is where, that is about segment satisfaction if you already have customers. The next one is, how confident we are to be the niche leaders. Again, our focus is to build a market leadership position. Uh, so how confident we are in this segment to be the niche leaders. Can we achieve that? How simple is the buying decision making unit? So the simpler, the better. Think about comparing an enterprise SaaS or enterprise product decision making unit and the stakeholders. There are a lot of them and it's a Difficult decision, meaning that uh, sales cycles are long, but if you are selling to a creator, to a solo founder, sales cycle is shorter because solo founder is everything in the decision-making unit. Is the seller, uh, sorry, is the buyer, 
is the user, is the owner of the budget, is the influencer, is everything. And then the last one is, do you have available resources to build the low risk offering and remember the lesson two. So create that scoring, uh, compare the segments and pick the best segment. And here example, we're going to finish with an example. ConvertKit in January 2015, they were focusing to email marketing for authors. Then if we see the landing page in March of the same year, they were focusing on marketing, email marketing for professional bloggers. Their focus segment was professional bloggers. They switched segments. And what was the result? The result was this sudden growth uh, starting in August of that same very same year. Um, here, I've been trying to do a kind of fictional exercise. Uh, if I were these guys of ConvertKit, how would I do the segment definition and the segment scoring to pick this segment of professional bloggers? So I'm not going to read it because I don't think I'm adding any value if I read it, but I put it together for you to understand and have an example of the segment focus recipe. That way it will be easier for you to build your segment focus recipes um, and, and decide which, which segment to, to focus your, uh, your strategy to accelerate your time to scale. So now, what can you do today to accelerate your time to scale? First of all, write the common needs and characteristics of your early customers or early adopters. The ones that are more satisfied with your product. If you still have no customers, perform a research exercise, interview with at least 24 people in your target audience. Then group all these people with, with the segment focus recipe to define the segments. Group them and use the segment focus recipe to define them. Groups of common needs, characteristics, pro common problems to solve, common psychographics. And then we are going to assess them. Third, use the segment scoring average, assessing them to decide the segment to focus and win. Remember, we need to win that segment. After that, you will need to adapt your value proposition, your low risk offering, remember the second lesson, and your positioning to focus on that segment. I hope this is uh, helpful for you guys. This is your uh, um, this is uh, your your focus recipe for segmenting, and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson next week. Thank you so much.